Hey, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to run any model that you want in cloud GPUs. So even the largest ones like Wakano 65B, you can run that easily with just a few clicks. Let's get into it. So why use this? Why use cloud GPUs? Well. I don't have top of the line GPUs sitting on my local machine and they cost thousands and thousands of dollars and are hard to get sometimes. So we can actually just rent them by the hour from cloud GPU services. And it's super easy. The environments are one click set up and we're good to go. We can run even the largest models. We're gonna be using a service called RunPod to get our GPUs. So the first thing you need to do is sign up for a new account. It's runpod.io. I'll drop the link in the description below. Next, you're gonna to come to a page just like this. It has a list of all the different kinds of GPUs you can run and they have different prices. So this is $2.30 an hour. This one's $1.29, this one's 69 cents. They have the RTX 6000, the RTX 4090, A6000. They have a bunch of different options. The next thing you're gonna do is put your credit card in. It is a paid service. So if you wanna use it, it's not that expensive. It's around a dollar or less per hour of use. So it's really inexpensive, especially if you're already paying for ChatGPT Plus. So you're gonna put your credit card in, you're gonna deposit some money into your account. Right now, I started with 25, I'm down to 22. The next thing you have to do is decide which GPU you want. So I would go with one of the latest generations and even the minimum one has 24 gigabytes of VRAM and 83 gigabytes of RAM. So you're really not gonna go wrong. You need to look at the model size and then compare it to what you can fit in VRAM. So we're gonna go with the RTX 6000 ADA. So now you just click deploy. And so this is what pre-deployment looks like. Up here, you can select a template. And what a template means is basically a pre-configuration of the GPU server. And so you can click here and you can see that they have a bunch of different options. They have stable diffusion, TensorFlow, Invoke AI, and RunPod even has their own default one for text generation web UI, which is basically stable diffusion for large language models. Now I had some trouble using the RunPod default template for text generation web UI. And so I found that the bloke actually has one. And who is the bloke? The bloke is the author behind a bunch of different models on Hugging Face, including Samantha 33B, Wizard Vicuña, Guacano 65B, Vic Unlocked Alpaca 65B. I mean, he is pumped out models left and right. And so he provided a template for RunPod that includes everything you need to run all of these models. And I'm gonna drop a link to that template in the description below so you can just use it one click and it shows up in the list of templates right here. So we're gonna select it. Then we click continue and it says no volume configured. All data will be lost on pod restart. That's okay. And we click deploy and it takes a few seconds for this first screen. And the next place you're gonna be dropped in is this screen right here, my pods. You click the down arrow and you get more information including a log output. Now, before we actually jump into the interface, I wanna show you around here. Now, if you click the little hamburger menu in the bottom left and then go to edit pod, you can see some variables here. But also something really interesting is if you click this little carrot right here, you get the environment variables. And this is where you can enter any environment variables that you want to be used in the environment. So I'm gonna click cancel. And the next thing we're gonna do is click connect. Now connect gives you a few options. You can start a web terminal, which is like a local terminal, but you're actually terminaled into the cloud GPU server. So we click that once and then connect to web terminal. And there it is. So if I just type LS, we have all of the files and folders that are available to us. So we're not gonna use this right now, but you can if you wanna do anything custom. Next, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna say connect via HTTP port 7860. And I'm gonna click it and it pops open a new window and it's all ready to go. So this is where you're gonna type your input and get your output. But the first thing we're gonna do is go over to the model tab and click model. Now down here at the bottom left, it says download custom model or LoRa. This is where it gets so awesome because it's so easy to use. So what you could do is you can drop the name of any model you want right here and it'll download it for you. So let me show you. So here's the Quanaco 65 billion parameter GPTQ version. And all I need to do is grab the name at the top left. So I'm gonna highlight that, I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna switch back to the text generation web UI and I'm gonna paste it right here. Now I'll put it in a little bit weird of a format. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those new lines. And then once that's done, I click download. And you can see right here, it says downloading files to models slash the bloke underscore guanaco dash 65B dash GPTQ. So this is gonna take a little while because it is a very large model. So I'm gonna skip ahead till it's finished. And once it's done, we're gonna click this little refresh button right here. So I click it. It loads up the model, there it is. I'm gonna click that. Now, once I load that, I'm gonna get some errors right here. You won't always get that, but sometimes you will. 
Usually there are some additional settings that you need to set for a model. And usually they're found on the Hugging Face model page. So we're here, we're on the Guanaco 65B page. And if we scroll down, it says how to easily download and use this model in text generation web UI. And that's like automatic 1111, but for large language models. So if I look down the list of instructions on step eight, we have some additional settings that we need to set. We need to set bits to four, group size to none, and model type to llama. We're gonna switch back to the text generation web UI. We're gonna come right here where it says GPTQ, W bits, I'm gonna to set to four, group size none, model type llama. And then I click save settings for this model in the top right. There it is, settings for the bloke Guanaco 65B saved. Then I'm gonna click this reload the model. Now, once I do that, it's gonna start loading the model and that does take a little while longer, just a few minutes. I'm gonna skip ahead right now. Okay, once it's done, you're gonna see this little success notice down here, successfully loaded the bloke Guanaco 65B. Then. When we're finally ready to use one of these models, we come over here to the text generation tab. And for the text generation tab, we could start with the preloaded template, or we can come down here and select one of the prompts. And it has a bunch of different prompt templates. And here's one specifically for the model that we're using. So instruct Guanaco non-chat. So I'm gonna click that, tell me a joke, and then we're gonna come down here and click generate. And then in the output, here's a joke for you. Why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. Amazing. So if you find you're getting a really long response and you wanna stop it, you can click the stop button. You can also click the continue button if it gets cut off and you can save your prompt or count the tokens. So within the text generation web UI, we have all the options and parameters that we can need. Uh, temperature, top P, top K, and it also provides descriptions of what each of these do. So I definitely recommend playing around with them and find what you like. And this can all be found under the parameters tab. Next, we have a training tab, and this is really all you need to train your models. Now, I'm not gonna go through the steps to actually train your models, but if you wanted to follow them, there's a little guide right here in the top left. It says confuse, click here for a guide, and it gives you a step-by-step -step guide for using text generation web UI to train your own models. I'll create a separate video just for that, but that's to come. Okay, so coming back to the RunPod dashboard, we can see some of the stats of our usage. We can see right now we're using 39% of the disk, that's the total amount of storage. We can also see that we're using 68% of the GPU. And when we're done with it, there's usually a disconnect button, except for this, there's no disconnect button, there's only a terminate button. And once you terminate it, all of the data is gone. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we click yes. And now we've terminated it and we're not getting charged anymore. And so that's it. You can spin up any model you want super easily. If you like this video, please consider giving me a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.